Up next, we have Dr. Elizabeth Yuko, and she's a woman with international experience in bioethics and communication strategies. She's been published by the New York Times, Washington Post, The Atlantic, Rolling Stone, you name it. And as an adjunct professor of ethics here at Fordham, she is the founding editor of the Ethics and Society blog. Tonight, though, she will be presenting a lesson in bioethics given by the Golden Girls. Thanks so much. Hello, thank you for coming today after a historic night last night. Um, as I woke up this morning from what I wasn't sure was one of my very specific night terrors or um, actual news, I thought, I'm giving a talk on the Golden Girls tonight. This seems maybe a little bit, not frivolous, but not necessarily the topic we should be discussing today. But then I realized, no, actually, the whole point of what I'm doing is looking at how this groundbreaking sitcom helped us deal with issues regarding medicine, the human body, and women's health. And there could be, a, I mean, that's, women's health is anything but frivolous. Anyone's health is anything but frivolous. But um, so this is actually pretty uh, relevant. So the talk is everything I know about bioethics I learned from the Golden Girls. Uh, if you are old enough to remember what the opening credits for the show look like, it is this. We'll start with a background in bioethics, in case it's not something you've encountered before. So bioethics examines moral questions related to individual, public, and global health, professional health care, decision-making, and health policy. It incorporates medical, scientific research, policy, and practice. So basically, any difficult questions dealing with medicine, science, the human body, stem cell research, end-of-life issues, organ transplantation, reproductive rights, uh, basically the things that no one wants to talk about, it's my job to address. So I'm a very popular person to sit next to at dinner parties. And um, the picture you see up there is an artist's rendition of me at work. So that is, <laughs> it got me on one of my better days. Uh, so we'll start with the basics. Who are the Golden Girls? It was an NBC sitcom that ran from 1985 to 1992, and it featured four mature, widowed, uh, widowed or divorced women living together in a house in Miami that was primarily decorated with florals, pastels, and wicker. Uh, the show featured B. Arthur as Dorothy, Betty White as Rose, Rue McClanahan as Blanche, and Estelle Getty as Sophia. So. Why, why the Golden Girls in bioethics? Why, why is this even a thing? Uh, so when I was doing my doctorate in bioethics, I kept coming across issues and thinking, oh, that's an episode of the Golden Girls. Oh, that's another episode of the Golden Girls. And then realized that the show was really an effective lens for looking at complex bioethics issues. Each character of the four, they're so solidly developed as individual characters with specific traits that when they make a, a certain medical decision, you know that it is Sophia as an 80-year-old person having this reaction to one of her roommates potentially having HIV. So they're able to explore these different uh, facets of issues without you know, being preachy or you, know, you, you understand where they're coming from because it's each specific character. And because you were dealing with four older women, they were allowed to cover topics that a lot of shows at the time were not able to cover. And that also gave them a lot of um, flexibility. So uh, just uh, some background on, on ethics, on bioethics specifically. There were four ethical principles. And um, as you can see from this picture, the field of bioethics is extremely diverse. Um, there are tall white old men, there are short white old men, there are old white men with ties, red ties, blue ties. So um, it's a very inclusive group. So as a woman talking about uh, sitcoms in the field, you can imagine how um, credible I seem. Uh, so anyway, we uh, will go into the principles of autonomy, non-maleficence, beneficence, and justice, which we'll go through. Uh, so autonomy is the first, coming from the words auto, meaning self, and nomos, meaning rule. And it's a combination of being able to make a free, informed decision about your own body and your own health care. Um, so it's free from any influences, and you, are, you completely understand what's happening. Unfortunately, it's a very broad concept, and there's not a whole lot of agreement into what specifically uh, it means, but it is you know, something we all, we all have and deal with. And um, an example from the literature was, I learned you can't give a sponge bath without a patient's consent, and that was from Devereaux, 1990. 
Um, so that was, yeah, she learned that informed consent is very important when pretending to be a nurse. Um, one specific case study uh, occurred when Sophia's friend, Martha, uh, decides she would like to end her own life. And so on one hand, that they go through the, her, Martha's decision to, uh, that, you know, that she's, she has aches and pains, she has nothing she wants to live for anymore, and goes through her thought process. And then she asks Sophia to join her and to be there in the room with her so she doesn't die alone. And Sophia then has to make the decision as her friend whether or not she would be there for her friend um, while she takes her own life. Long story short, it's a sitcom. Everything worked out. Sophia gave a great speech, and um, her friend ended up living, so that's great. I mean, living in the 80s, I don't know like right now if she's living, but um, it all worked out then. So I'll, I'll combine the next two principles together because they're kind of two sides of the same coin. Beneficence is doing um, anything you could do to prevent or remove harm or evil. Um, and also promoting good. So that is, if you're a medical practitioner, making sure that whatever you do has a good, it, your, the outcome, the intentional outcome is positive and you're trying to help people. And uh, maleficence is the uh, medical uh, thought of do no harm. So, and you should not um, inflict harm or evil on other people. So this is Dorothy contemplating uh, probably harming her mother. Um, <laughs> an example of both of these is in one particular episode, Blanche's sister Virginia visits her and they don't have a very close relationship. So that's established in the beginning. They're not close, quote, close friends. They're not close as sisters. And Virginia is there to ask Blanche for one of her kidneys because she has uh, renal failure. And so Blanche has to go through the decision making process of figuring out whether or not she wants to lose a sister or a kidney. And it's, for us now, looking back, it's kind of probably easy saying, you know, okay, of course you give your sister your kidney, but Blanche is also very vain. She's also very uh, into her own appearance. This is her body is her temple. And so for her, there was a lot of, uh, a lot of different thoughts that went into her decision. Ultimately, spoiler alert in case you haven't seen it, um, th she decides to give her sister the kidney, but again, because it's a sitcom, the blood match, the blood types were not a match and someone happened to die with the correct blood batch on the same day, the sister lives, everyone's happy. So um, I guess what I also like about this is unlike uh, real life, you, um, you, there's usually a happy ending and you get to go through these complex decision-making uh, situations, but always after 22 minutes know that things will uh, end up okay, which is something, especially today, that's comforting. Um, another thing that they deal with a lot is paternalism in medicine. So this is when the patient's autonomy comes into conflict with the doctor's obligation to do no harm and to promote good. And this is, it's, it's still a problem. It's still something that uh, we are all dealing with. And, but there is a gradual shift towards a more patient-centered approach as opposed to just the doctor tells you you're gonna do something and you do it blindly following it. And there's one two episode arc in particular where Dorothy is very ill. Uh, she can't, uh, figure out what's wrong with her, and um, she's not getting very much help from her doctors, who all happen to be uh, men who aren't listening to her. And one of the things she says in that particular episode is, or actually this is from a different episode, but it fits, believe me, just because men in the medical profession wear white does not mean they're angels. So this is a shot from that, the episode where she has chronic fatigue syndrome. Uh, you might recognize a pre transparent, pre-arrested development, Jeffrey Tambor playing the doctor there. Um, and he asks her, you know, are you dating anyone? Are you divorced? And trying to minimize uh, this very real disease that she had. And um, this was, this is not uncommon for anybody, but to have, especially across two different episodes, the audience be able to understand what people, particularly women, go through in a medical context is really helpful and very um, empowering. The last uh, ethical principle is justice. So this is the sharing of benefits and burdens, uh, reducing health disparities, ensuring access to health care and access to research, both the results of research and the participation in research, the distribution of resources, um, rights and obligations, and any potential conflicts with established legislation. And in one particular episode, Sophia is bemoaning the fact that her friend who's living in a government-subsidized uh, old person's home 
and not getting appropriate care uh, would be cared for perhaps better in Japan. And that's when she says, why can't we care for our elderly the way they do in Japan? Um, the show also addresses a lot of public health ethics issues. So uh, public health eth ethics is when the autonomy of an individual is placed against the greater public good. So whether or not you could limit someone's autonomy in order to help more people. And um, so in this particular uh, image there, they are, the, the girls are about to embark on a cruise with four longtime general friends, and they decide they'd like to buy condoms. Well, not like, they would buy condoms. And as we probably can guess, they're not of uh, reproductive age, so they're doing this in a public health context. They're doing this to help not contract HIV, STIs, and again in the 80s to have this very, and it, she literally is shouting, condoms, rose, condoms, condoms, condoms. She's literally shouting about um, sexual health, and this, is, this, was, this was huge, the fact that this was something that people were talking about. Um, Another famous example is um, one particular episode where Rose uh, thinks that she may have HIV uh, because she went in for a blood transfusion and the, the hospital contacted her saying that was a possibility. And she went through this entire, well, they, all the women went through uh, their own reactions to the news. And in one particular, particular scene, she and Blanche are having a discussion and Rose essentially says, Blanche, this should be you. Blanche, for those of you who aren't aware, are, is noted for her enjoyment of sexual activities. And uh, so Blanche says, wait a minute, this is not, AIDS is not a bad person's disease. It's not God punishing you for your sins. And again, that was a really strong, important message in the 80s uh, with the height of the AIDS epidemic uh, to have people on a very popular network sitcom destigmatizing AIDS and HIV. So that is uh, an overview of the bio, or what you can learn from uh, the Golden Girls about bioethics. And thank you for being a friend.